Good morning. Welcome to another video by Antiques Arena. I'm a UK reseller of buy and sell antiques collectibles and weird and wonderful and hope to flip it for a profit. Today you're going to get to see some of my car boot sale finds. Uh, we're going to have a little chat and show you what I bought, what I paid for it and what I think it's worth. So you can uh, see what you think yourself. Now this weekend was a massive, massive heat wave. It was up to 32 degrees um in madly car boot sale car boot sale is like a yard sale swap meet no yard sale swap meet a flea market um but i was very very lucky they put me right in the corner under a tree so i had shade and i had a breeze and it was a beautiful day but i did three car boot sales sliced my finger open um i was looking at a beautiful big murano glass cockerel or rooster in america and I'm running my hands over it, checking for damage, and I went like that and sliced straight across my finger because it was missing some of this crown. And I didn't even so much as have an apology off the stall holder. And on top of that, they charged me full price for the item I did buy off them. So they didn't even give me a discount. So that was poo. Uh, <laughs> dangers of going to car boot sales. You can lose a finger. Um, a lot of people I know use gloves because when you're rummaging through boxes, not pins can stab you, things like that. But I like to feel the jewelry. I like to feel the weight that, the you know, as dull as it sounds, the texture in my fingers. I like to feel it. Um, so, yeah, that's one of the hazards. So be careful when you're um, dealing in antiques and digging in jewelry boxes because it happens. Anyway, uh, if I'm looking a bit rough and a bit clammy it's because covid has finally hit our house uh, my stepdaughter yesterday tested positive i've been testing constantly at the moment i'm negative but i don't feel very well at all uh, no one else in the household has caught it as yet fortunately two of my children were visiting their mother this weekend so i phoned the school and i said they won't be in this week because they're not coming home i'm not exposing them to the covid um, so I'm waiting for the school now to form me and have a row with me because as far as the school is concerned, they can go to school with COVID. And that's exactly how we got it because the school brought it on for Liani. So the school won't be thankful. I don't sue them. Because honest to God, she's really rough and I'm not feeling great. So odds are I'm going to have COVID by the end of this week. So anyway, shall we um, get started? Because I don't know uh, if there'll be another video out this week. <clears throat> This may be the only one I'm able to make. So hopefully you'll enjoy it. There's quite a lot of treasures here. It wasn't as good as I would like. Now there was a total heat wave, 32 degrees, 33 degrees. And when I got in the car, I was melting. In fact, I'll give you an example of how hot it was. I had um, a sheet on the floor, on the grass, with all uh, silver plate and copper plates and brass plates. And um, when you pick the plate up, people were dropping them because they were that hot. They just couldn't lift them up. It was like picking them up out of an oven. It was absolutely crazy, unbelievable. The only thing I had was that little bit of sunburn under the tree. It was fabulous. But I did wear a full shirt to collar up, covering my neck, and my arms were covered. So, yeah, it's something I learned a long time ago. Wear a white shirt, keeps you cool, and keeps the sun off you. So anyway, should we get started um, with the haul? I've had a mixed job lot. Now, I bought some bits privately before we went into the car boot sale. And I'm going to talk about one of them, first of all. Well, let me give a massive shout out, first of all, to Rob and Sharon. Um, I've been friends with them for quite a few years now at the car boot sales, and we talk and everything. They even picked um, a load of Wimbrys and gave me a pound of Wimbrys this week for my mum to make a cake i was really nice of them and didn't charge me anyway um they buy things i tend to leave them listed on ebay and if it fails then i buy it off them now the first thing i bought off them this week was i can't, I can't even stop shaking was a rolled gold bangle now this is one fifth nine carat roll gold but it is set with six garnets it's quite a beautiful thing now, roll gold is not as in solid gold as in nine carat, solid nine carat, or solid 18 carat, and so forth. What it means is a certain percentage of this nine carat is rolled through the um, bracelet. Uh, in this case, one fifth nine carat. So it is 23 grams. So one fifth of that should be nine carat. Um, and it's engraved and set with uh, the three garnets. 
So they listed it on eBay twice at $59.99 and didn't get a bid. And I don't, I don't like to just buy stuff off them because I, I can achieve a fair price on the website. Um, on the website, I think that's going to be £120. Um, so I let them have their time on eBay. It didn't sell. So I gave them the £60 they had actually had it up on eBay for, um, which works out to be around $100. Now, you could argue, well, why pay it? I could have probably gone in and offered 50 and had it cheaper because it didn't sell on eBay. But I genuinely feel it's worth 120, 130 pounds. Take a look at this. I'm going to show you just how inconsistent eBay is. So we're going to start off, all right? Here's one here. One fifth, nine carat roll gold bangle. All right, 32 grams. Granted, it's about eight grams heavier but it doesn't have any of the stone set. That's a sold price of 81 pounds. You have two here, sold for 104 pound, broken, scrap or repair. And they are 40 grams the pair. So they're 20 grams each. So if you was to half it, they've paid 52 pound per bangle for spares or repairs for 20 grams. I've only paid eight pound more for a beautiful one with garnets. Then you come over here, there's one here, uh, 106 pounds sold. And this one was 21.9 grams, so 22 grams. Nicely engraved, nice condition on them. Nice photographing, whoever done that one. But um, you can see there, no stone set in it. Again here, 120 pounds sold. These are sold prices. All right, I don't know where I can show you that you've missed out, but these are sold prices. Um, £120 per there, 15.7 grams. And that's all it is. So when they've got, that's much less than what I got. I got eight grams more than that, and I got the garnets, and they sold that one for £120. So it's all about with eBay, who finds your item, how you photograph it, and how you describe it. Take a look at this. 32 grams almost with garnets some i'm i'm going to refrain from using the word idiot but somebody made a massive mistake and sold that for 99 pence on a best offer not even one pound by the time they pay the commission to ebay the commission on the sales commission on the postage they actually they've given it away they don't make anything off it and that contains one fifth nine carat gold of 31 grams which should be a few grams of gold well, one fifth of nine carat, one fifth of 32 is 3.1, no, maybe three, yeah, 3.1, 6.2. Should theoretically be 6.2 grams of gold in that. Um, and they sold that 99 pence. Now, I know my smelters actually buy roll gold by the kilo or by the bucket. They'll melt it down and then whatever they manage to extract out of it, they'll actually pay you the the weight, the gold weight, minus the fee for doing the job. So you can see now why I paid the £60. I tried playing fair with them. Um, we are friends, and I do think it's worth £120, £130, no problem at all. In fact, I'm going to put £125 on it, and it doesn't matter how long it sits there. It's a beautiful, beautiful item to just be up for sale. Also goes to show the, the type of bargains you can get on eBay where people making mistakes. But yeah, really, really nice um bangle and what can i say if you see roll gold even broken roll gold it's worth buying because it contains gold i've got quite a big collection of roll gold in a bucket um and in another 10 or 20 years i'll probably weigh it in i'm not going to do it beforehand um gold's just going to keep going up and you never know eventually i may get the chemicals and do it myself and chemically melt it or extract the gold rather <laughs> So that was the first. I had three pieces off them. That was the first. This is the second. This is an absolute stormer of a nine carat gold carved cameo, carved shell cameo brooch. Now the cameo itself is beautiful. This is 8.2 grams in total. Um, now, I know there's going to be a few grams in the shell itself, but very rare. Normally, all you see is this going around the cameo. 
very rare you actually get this big skirt coming off it. Look at that. That's a big skirt coming off the cameo that's just there for decorative purposes. You don't really need it. Um, and you very rarely see that. All you'll normally see is the mount going around the cameo and you'll have a couple of grams. I think that's like four or five grams of nine karat gold and then probably three grams of cameo. Or even if I said 50-50. Um, gold is about £16.50 a gram at the moment. So if I was to say it's four grams times 16.50. It's 66 pounds of scrap in the gold at an approximate. If I was to say half the weight is the gold, half is the cameo. And I actually think it's a little on leaning towards the gold rather than the cameo. It's in perfect condition and it's fully, fully hallmarked. Full set of hallmarks there, nine karat gold. And again, they put this up for sale and didn't get anywhere. And I bought this off eBay with a bid. Uh, I, I actually competed with two other bidders and I won it at £65. I like to play fair because I don't, because we're friends, I don't want to say, well, I'm going to ask this, but I only want to pay this. Um, but I will pay a fair market price. If others are willing to pay you 60 65 then that's where I'll pay you, or I may even beat it by a few quid. Um, but again, you know, there's there's more in the gold than what I've paid. And to be honest with you, I think it could even be five grams of gold. Um, and with saleable gold, it'll pay you up to 19, 20 pound a gram. And some people will weigh the stone as well. But again, I'm going to be up like 125 pounds for the cameo. So I'm going to be doubling up on the bracelet and the cameo brooch. And that's why I paid them their asking prices because I thought that was only fair. What was the third thing I had off them? I had the cameo brooch, had the bangle. Bear with me a second. I had something else off them. They're probably shouting down the thing now, saying, is this, 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 this? And I can't remember. It may not even be uh, Mickey in the car. When I find, when I remember what the other th piece was or find it it'll either be in the next video or if i find it before the end i'll put it in this one but i had three things off them i just can't oh that's what i had beautiful beautiful ring where's my trousers bear with me I knew there was a third thing. I'm not editing the video. I'm sorry. I'm having trouble with the um, computer overheating with uh, the Adobe. So you have to bear with me on some things. Normally, I'd cut it up so that it was easier. Um, so, yeah, we have a nine karat gold ring again. Absolutely stunning ring. Purple stone, probably an amethyst. I haven't tested the white stones. Could be diamonds. Could be cubic zirconias. But it is absolutely fabulous. Fully hallmark nine karat gold, three grams in weight. So again, you're talking is like 45, 50 pound in the weight. And they charged me 45 pounds for this. Um, so I spent about 170 pounds and yeah, uh, 60 and 60, 120 and the five, 125, 130, 170 pounds I spent yesterday with them for the three pieces, which works out at, God, about two hundred and thirty dollars, something like that, for three pieces of jewellery. So it's quite expensive, but I've got a load of cheap stuff to come. Don't worry. These pieces I bought off friends. Now they actually showed that to the gold buyer up in um, Madley. He offered forty-five pound. I'd already said I'd pay forty-five pound. They'd rather me have it than uh, the gold buyer. So yeah, came to me. Three beautiful pieces. You've got to be honest. The bangle, the cameo, and the ring, absolutely stunning. So Rob and Sharon, thank you very much. And I will see you Thursday or Saturday or Sunday, providing I haven't got the COVID, the lurgy. It's not looking good at the moment. So where do we start? I bought at Gethly Gay Car Boot Sale. It was two fields, two massive fields. But it was very poor. But I did manage to buy a few bits. Let's start off. I bought more paperweights. Not from the same buyer as was supplying me, but I had more paperweights. First of all, I had this one which is, I have no idea what they are. Some type of thistle, I'm not sure. It's lucite paperweight with um, some form of flower inside, and it is 
by Havard Grange. It's got the later mark. So this one is 1999. Um, the early ones will have a pewter rose in the center. But beautiful Havard Grange paperweight. I don't know what is wrong with me today. I just can't stop shaking. Then I had this one, which is absolutely stunning. These stems of flowers coming up, and then you have the flower on this uh, blue ground. And this one is, got his label on it, Murano glass again. The three pieces, I'm going to show the other one in a moment, the three paperweights come in for £10. So about $14 for three paperweights. That one's 25 to £30. Pounds. That one's probably around £40. Pounds. And then we had this. Look at the difference. I now, this one doesn't have the label. I'm going to have to check it first. But I believe this is another Murano. Same design as this, just a bit more elaborate, a bit better quality. Um, I'm thinking Murano again. I'm pretty confident, to be honest. And this one's going to be up like £75, £85, pound, maybe a bit more. I love the control of the bubble base. And then the flowers. Absolutely stunning. It's, it is well finished off underneath. I'm trying to get it so you can see with the light. But it is finished very well underneath. It's a beautiful quality thing. Same pattern as this, really. Um, but that base is stunning. You know, and you can see the base. It's like all bubbles, like you get in a bubble bath. It literally, it's like that foam and then the bubbles sitting on the bubble foam. It's really gorgeous. Um, so, yeah, three paperweights for a tenner. She had about 10 or 15 paperweights on the stall, but these were the ones I wanted. But I am kicking myself because there was a large Kaith nest this size, beautiful spiral, but it was unmarked for a fiver. And I thought, nah, and then I was kicking myself later. I should have had it. It was absolutely stunning. But when you're rushing around the boot sale first thing in the morning, you try and be as fast as you can. It's grab what you will like, what, what you know, and move on because you don't know what's on the next stall. If you spend too long a an hour in, then you'll end up missing other pieces, gold and things like that on another stall. I also purchased this in um, Gethly Gay. <clears throat> and I got to say thank you to Rob again for leaving it there for me because he saw it. He was on the stall before me, left it there. I he walked away. I come up to the stall, bought it, and I went, look what I just had. He said, oh, he left that there. So thank you for that. I appreciate the gift. We have a Rod Alton Bone China Sow or Pig. Beautiful one on plinth. Stamped. It is stamped on the belly. You can see it like that, but I, I can't get the camera to capture it. But it's fully stamped up on the belly of the pig, Roald Dalton, in good condition, about six inches long, something like that. It's just a beautiful pig or so. I always sell pigs really, really well. So yeah, two pounds, two and a half, three dollars. Look at that face. It's a face only a mum could love. <laughs> it's gorgeous. I love it. All right, then, move along, move along. Where's next? Right, then. So, oh, the last buy in Gethly Gay. I purchased these two. I paid £8 for the two, which is quite excessive for silver, to be honest with you, for me to buy. But, yeah, look at that one. So, we have two sterling silver and cubic zirconia or glass uh, crucifix or cross. Nice, um, both fully hallmarked, thin chains, but you know, they are um, decent enough. But yeah, look at the two different sizes on the crosses. This was the one I wanted, the big one, because I see the big one at about 15 to 20 pounds. And that one will be a nice, cheap little bit of silver on the side for like 10, probably a tenner. I'll probably go 15 and 10, 25 pounds for my eight. And it's a fair return. And there's some cheap bits of silver to go up on the website. If anybody hasn't been to the website recently, there you go. Uh, over 2,200 items up for sale on the website. A massive selection. And that isn't by multiple dealers. That is my stock. So you feel free to message and chat about anything you want. Okay, from Catholic Gay, we went to Abergavenny. And it used to be down in Planellen. 
Anyway, it used to be down the bottom um, of Abergavenny, and they've moved in now right up on the top of the mountain. And they haven't been going there for quite a few years, to be honest with you, since they moved it. But I've started going again recently, and I'm buying well. That's where I've been getting most of my paperweights and some bits and bobs. But today, I've done exceptionally well. Exceptionally well. Let's start off with my favorite piece. Two hands. What is it? Well, it's a Georgia third um, cat glass decanter. Um, very early 19th century, probably about 1800. So you're talking a 220 year old decanter. It's got vertical cut in here. Then you have the mercurial step cut in up here. Strawberry diamond cut in all over this bulbous uh, top. Step cut in again, and then more cut in. Simple neck ring cut in again on this sort of diamond mushroom stopper in good condition look at that there is a very very tiny amount of blooming and i mean tiny you can't even see it on the camera but there is there you can see it just there and it's very faint very minor but we have a 220 year old decanter um, now i looked in my book last night and they're putting them down from 1780 to 1820 that's the date range they're putting them down now, the book I have on decanters is, bear with me, this book. That's my decanter book. All right, and it covers the history of all, illustrated history of all decanters from 1650. If anybody wants the ISBN, let's turn in, let me lock that. That's the ISBN, if anybody wants to order this book. It is a cracking book. Um... Bear with me. Now, if you look here in the center, that is the type of thing it would be. It would have come in like a tantalus or a little housing or case, if you like. It came under the cased section. Uh, but if you look at these ones in the bottom there, they have the step cutting going horizontal. But if I was to zoom in, There's an almost identical version of what I've got there above it uh, with the vertical cut in. Slightly different stopper, but that's pretty much what I've got. But yeah, 220 to 240 year old cut glass decanter without a chip, without a crack. All right, I don't have the, um, the case for it. I don't care. It is beautiful. Cost me a tenner. So $14. Uh, and it's going out for 100 at least. Now, some websites will be asking two, three, four hundred for a 220 year old decanter, but I'll be more than happy for 100 pounds. Uh, and that's what it's going on the website. I will give her a clean, no chips, no cracks. It'll go out for a one hour and then someone else can move it on for more. But I'm over the moon with it. What a find in Abergavenny car boot sale. I also bought in Abergavenny car boot sale a piece of Art Deco glass. This is spatter glass, uh, Czechoslovakian, 1930s to 50s. It's got its original metal mesh frog on the top. In good condition. I love this mottled colors. This was three pounds. So about $5 and they sell 15, 20 pound. No problem at all. I also bought off the same gentleman, and these were off the same gentleman as the decanter as well, by the way. I bought this, which I believe is Italian Murano glass, but I need to get it checked. Um, I don't have enough specialist knowledge on this one. I believe it's Murano, Millie Fiori. Um, snapped and sharp pontle, it hasn't been finished off, still sharp. Um, it's in good condition. I'm going to put it up on the Murano group on Facebook later to ask for some advice just to confirm if it is or if it's a copy. But I think it's Millie Fiori Murano. A beautiful thing. Probably, I can't think of his name. Is it Tosso? I'm not sure. Anyway, um, I'm going to put it up on the group later. And if it does come back as Murano, it's like 40, 50 pound bars for three quid again. Three pound and three pound, six pound for two. I didn't knock him to a five. I thought it was more than fair, six pound. So I give him his six pounds. Uh, so another five, five dollars.
I also purchased in Abergavenny this. Look at that. Is that not just stunning? It's not a rhythm, unfortunately. Rhythm Japanese clocks from this era sell for a lot more money, but this is an identical copy to a rhythm, but it is a Big Ben repeater uh, West clock. And it was produced in Scotland and it's running. I don't know if you can hear a tick in there. I wound them up and it is running. And so far it's been going for an hour and a half. So happy days. This cost me a whole two pounds. Some people sell them for 65s and 75s. I'm going to go in at 50. I'm more than happy at 50 pounds for my two pound outlay, which is about $3. And I can always come down a little bit if I have to, but um, it's a beautiful color. And it's in good condition. It all depends how this chrome cleans up. Now, I've done a video the other day showing you how to clean chrome. So check that out if um, you're interested. I also purchased another bit of jewellery in Abergavenny. Which is this. Now, it's Art Deco. It's fully hallmarked sterling silver. Now, I haven't dated the hallmarks yet. I just haven't bothered. I haven't had a chance. When you come in last night, you know only came in last night and I already feel rotten to the core. <clears throat> so we have sterling silver, it's a good thickness. Nice malachite stone there, which is a very art deco stone. Um, it's a small bracelet though. I, looking at that, I'd say that's gonna fit like a four inch wrist. So you're talking a very small lady, four and a half inch wrist, I guess. Small lady to even a child, but it's a beautiful thing and it cost me six pounds which is, let's be honest, there's no money. It's like $9, $10 for a beautiful bit of silver like that. And it's not stamped 925. It's got a full set of hallmarks with a lion patent. So like, it's 25, 30 pound of anyone's money. I also purchased this in Abergavenny, which is a nice antique brass inkwell. Now, what can I say about it? Not a huge amount. I wouldn't call it Art Nouveau, to be honest with you. Um, it's almost Art Nouveau, but it's it's just not strong enough to be Art Nouveau with these flowers. Now, it's just not quite there. Um, you've got your pen tray here. You've also got your pen tray and come, pens can come across there. You've got your two inkwells. It's really nice. It is a nice thing. It really is a nice object. Now, I paid a fiver for it. Now, you can see it's a good old early original one. It's not a repo. It cost me a fiver. Um, there's a small hole, there's a small hole in, uh, this one here. I don't know if you can see it there, which is quite annoying because anyone who wants to use it is either going to have to put a liner in that now or just use this side. But most people would just have it for display. You wouldn't really, who uses quill fountain pens these days? Do you know what I mean? It was a fiver. Even with that tiny hole there, it's going to go for 25, 30 pounds. So my five pounds, seven dollars, seven and a half dollars. Oh, I had more in that then. I also got one. I forgot from Gatley Gay. I had another copper and brass Antinon. This one's not as old as the last one, but it is a nice copper and brass Antinon nonetheless. But it's an extended version. Normally, you would just have this piece here. You can see the join. Have this piece there, and then the brass. But somebody obviously wanted a longer one, um, so they'd made it longer. Don't know. Don't know why. But yeah. Either way, this owes me five pounds, and I don't think it's as good as my last one. So this one's probably going to go for about thirty-five pound on the website. Hunting ons, they sell. They really do. Next, I purchased these. I paid twenty pound from tenner of ours, so I paid about twenty seven, twenty eight dollars for these. I'm not sure if that's like pe supposed to be Pegasus. You know, you got the horse with the uh, wings. Now they're Oriental, more than likely Chinese, but could be Japanese. Um, I have to look into them a bit. Even if I bother, I may just sell them. The twentieth century. I'm under no illusions, they're an old set. Nice there, nice butterfly. But they are a beautiful pair of 
brass or polished bronze vases. Now you see there that is not a swastika, that is a Buddhist symbol. The, the Nazis stole it off the Buddhist uh, religion. Uh, you can see all the clouds now around the top. Same pattern down here with the horse. They're pretty much an identical pair. There's a little dent on this one here. You can see it. See there? The other one is perfect. Just a nice pair of decorative 20th century, in my opinion. Um, I'm going to call them Oriental just to be safe, but I think they're Chinese. And they are either polished bronze or brass. I pay twenty pound. I think they were sixty five, fifty five, sixty five pound a pair. That's what I think. That was all I bought in Abergavenny. I've gone madly to go yet, but I want to go back to Gethly Game. And I got a piece here that I forgot to show you. We have a beautiful Pearson's art pottery vase. It's produced in stoneware, hand painted. And it is a big example. Now, unfortunately, it's the modern of the examples. Um, what you want is the uh, earlier Art Deco Pearson vases. They pull hundreds. Some people are even asking a thousand or two for them. Crazy, crazy, crazy money. This one's got the modern mark uh, with the dishwasher and microwave safe. But it is the Pearson mark. Um, now, the factory or the Pearson's factory was bought out by the workers in 1990 but by 1996 was shut down so this could be it's going to be towards the end of the life of the factory in my opinion um you know probably just before or just after the buyout so probably around 1990 however these are still pulling money this is still a 50 to 75 pound uh, Pearson bars because of the size and the decoration on there it's just a beautiful thing um, most of what you find with Pearson was they started off with the stoneway bottles and things, but yeah, really, really nice, big, beautiful art, art vase. That cost me two pounds, so about three dollars. Then we went up to um, Madley and it was heaving packed, but up in Madley, I'm limited on time because. Again, the queue, they drive us in, we park up. You can go in and buy it madly, and you've got to pay £10 to go in early entry because they let the buy, they let the sellers go in an hour and a half to two hours before the buyers. All right. Mm -hmm. So a lot of dealers will get in the car, and they'll pay £10, drive in their car, park the car up, and walk around for that two hours, buy in for a tenner before the public come in. And i be honest with you, I would as well. However, I had a 30-foot pitch, 30-foot they charged me £8. So I paid £8 to go in there and sell with a 30-foot space, and other dealers went in there and paid a tenner just to buy. But you can get some cracking stuff. Um, but it takes me an hour to set up, which leaves me half hour to 45 minutes of running around to see if I can pick anything up at all before I sell. Because what I like to do, well, I'll give you an example. Yesterday, I spent about £250 on all the stock altogether, but I pulled almost 200 back. So I'm only 50 pounds down on the day with all this stock free, including the gold. So everything on the table realistically only owes me 50 pounds. I'm still selling off the shop stock and stock from my garage and that cheap at the car boot sales, pound for this, two pound for that. So it's all going. Anyway, in the 45 minutes or so I had running round, it was heaving, but it was really, really poor. Um, I had no gold at all yesterday from the car boot sales. I had bits of silver, cheap bits of silver. This one come in really, really nice. Marcus eats down the side. Marcus eats around there. And then you have, I don't know if I'm going to capture the color. No, it's not enough light. That in the center is the most beautiful fire opal, crystal and fire opal. It is absolutely stunning. So if I can get... I can't stop shaking long enough to capture the colors. No. 
anybody who wants to see it, go on, on the website in a few days if I'm well enough to list it, and you'll see it's got red and blue and all the colors going through the opal. It is absolutely beautiful. And it's sterling silver, mark as eat uh, in, with opal. It only cost me a pound, one and a half dollars. And I have looked, and they're asking comfortably 45 to 60 pounds for these. I'm going to be around 50 pounds, 45, 50 pounds. And they're achieving it for a really nice opal and marquisite ring. So for a pound, that was a really good find. I've had a modern bit of amber, a nice amber necklace. So that was quite nice, a modern bit of amber there. That was a pound. It's not going to be fortunes, that's like a tenner. That's going to be like 10 or 15 pounds, that one. One of my favourite buys from um, Madley was this. It's a slipway decorated tankard. On the back here, it reads Barton. So probably a souvenir piece from Barton. Then it reads Tavern 1904. And on the inside, you have the frog. So to all intents and purposes, it's a frog mug or frog tankard because it's a tankard. It's not a mug, it's a big tankard. And it's in lovely condition with this sort of slipway pattern on there. I'm not sure if that's a maker's mark on the base there. Have a quick little look. If it is a maker's stamp, it's illegible. I can't read it. But it almost has a look of being talky way about it. But, yeah, I don't know if that's where Barton is. But, yeah, beautiful, beautiful thing. Um, it cost me a pound, a whole pound. And, again, I'm going to do some research on this, but I think that's comfortably going to be 50 quid. 40 to 50 pound, in my opinion. So a beautiful um, tankard there. I also purchased this. Actually, I think this one came in from Amber Um, which is a Buren um, barrel clock movement. And it does run a little bit. So it's got its original key. Pull the back off. Let's see. Does run. How accurate it is, I don't know. It's a Swiss clock. Uh, it, on the back is B U R E N, so Buren. It cost me a fiver for a Swiss movement antique, probably 1900, 1920s um, clock movement like this. What's that worth? I don't know. 30 to 50 pounds? 20 to 40, 30 to 50, something like that. I will do research before I put it up for sale, but, you know, it's an antique clock running. And the face is lovely and clean, too. Look at that. Normally, you've got hairlines and cracks and everything through the face or stains. So, And it's got its original key. So that was nice for a five or seven, seven and a half dollars. What else did I have? I had this, which is a nice, very thin, hand-blown, Deep Bristol blue and green glass perfume bottle. It's unsigned. It's got a sharp pontal mark that hasn't been finished off, so it's just been snapped and left. So it's a hand-blown example. Now, I expect it to see a signed. Now, this isn't an old example. I was thinking it was like Bristol blue glass, uh, and I was expecting to see a signed Bristol or something like that, or Bath. Um, but I couldn't find a signature on there. It owes me a pound. Uh, one and a half dollars, and I think it's 10 to 15 pounds. What a perfume bottle! It's absolutely gorgeous. It's quite thin and fragile, if you like, but not not as thin as like you find on the Egyptian perfume bottles. But a really nice thing. I love the colors, love the stripes. You know, if I was to put 10 or 15 pounds on it, it's going to sell just as a collectible perfume bottle because it's beautiful and it was a pound. I told you I cut my finger on the vase. Well, the lady then sold me this. And charged me full price and didn't even give me a discount. She charged me a fiver for an old, probably World War II shell, converted into a vase. They just turned the top over and applied some handles and turned it into a vase. Um, it is, for all intents purposes, trench art. It cost me a fiver. It's a good heavy shell. Uh, I'm not sure what caliber it is. Hang on. Let's see if I can't see without my glasses. Is that 107? I'm not sure. I can't 
can't see it on the glasses. There you go. So yeah, again, it's not fortunes. It's like 20 to 30 pound, 20, 25 pound for a uh, trench art bars like this. But for a fiver, it's good profit. And again, it's something different and unusual to go up on the website. Uh, if you haven't put a like on the video yet if you enjoy the content please smash the like button if you share the videos it's a free way of helping my channel uh that doesn't cost you a penny so please share the videos and i always appreciate the comments it's nice to hear what you think even if i don't always get a chance to reply to comments because i am so so busy uh i really appreciate reading them um and i do get back to you as and when i can you know I'll, I'll, if i got a few hours one week i answer some messages but trust me, when you're raising the children I'm raising, trying to run a business, trying to film on YouTube, trying to do housework and everything else, I don't get a chance to sit down for dinner, let alone sit down and answer comments half the time. This, I'm not sure what it is. Let me rephrase that. It's Black Forest Carving. It's a terrier. I'm thinking it may be a spill of ours. I'm not sure. That could hold your matches, I suppose. But that almost looks like a letter rack to put your letters in. So it's probably a pen holder, actually. It's probably a letter rack and pen holder. That's what it is. So it's a Black Forest carved terrier, letter holder, and pen rack. Now it's got a chip on the ear. It's not the end of the world. A bit of uh, wood stain on that, and you wouldn't even see it. Um, are they glass eyes? Glass eyes. Um it's not as nicely carved as the owl I had, but it is still a very collectible little thing. And I think he holds a pen there in his hands, or paws rather. Um, it came in, it was two pounds, three dollars for a Black Forest letter rack. And again, it's probably gonna be 30 pounds, 25, 30 pounds of anyone's money. Um, I don't know if there's another one out there. I didn't actually look. It would be interesting to see whether or not I can find one. Uh, let me see Let's see if there's one anyway uh, let the rock It's just interesting to see whether there's any out there. Didn't actually think at the time, didn't register that it could be a letter rack. But yeah, makes perfect sense. Letter rack and pen holder. There's no one out there. So being as collectible as it is, I'm probably going to go in a 35, see if I get a bite or whether I have to bring it down in time. But uh, if even if I do bring it down. Um, so yeah. That's probably going to go out for about thirty-five pounds. Um, I may chuck a bit of stain on there, and there I got stain to do it, so I may chuck a bit of stain on there and see how it comes up. Just having a look around now to see if there's anything else I've missed from today's video, because I do like to try and get it all in the video if I can. I did have a little bit of gold. Oh, what have I done here? I bought a Swarovski crystal, or I presume Swarovski crystal, but a uh, bumblebee. But put it in my bag, and the wing has fallen off. It just needs a little bit of glue to put him back on the wing. That was 50p. Um, normally they come in sterling silver, but that one's base metal. But what I did have was for free, didn't cost me nothing. A little bit of broken gold and it back to a earring. Now, I haven't tested it yet. It's more than likely going to be nine carat gold. I will acid test it. And if it's nine carat gold and the earring back, I'll just go in my box. Just so, just for a bit of fun, out of curiosity, what's it weigh? Probably won't even weigh a gram. It does actually weigh a gram. One gram. So if it is gold, that's 16 pounds for free. 16 and a half pounds for free. So, yeah, just for a little bit of a broken necklace. Let me just double check if anything else. Sharon, I have to thank for the plaster. 
because I sliced my finger open and honestly, I was trying to run around by in and it was just blood running out of my finger, dripping everywhere. And I couldn't go through the boxes because of the blood and nobody was volunteering a uh, plaster or anything. I went back to the car and all I could find was a bit of tissue and cellar tape or parcel tape. So I taped my hand up and it was seeping through the parcel tape. Uh, so we cleaned it up then um, and Sharon gave me a plaster, which is still on there now. And it worked a treat. So yeah, thank you very much, Sharon. So I think that's about it for today's video. Um, I know it's a long video, but I wanted to put it all in today's video because I genuinely don't know if I'm gonna be making another film for the next week or so. It depends how rough I feel now if I catch this COVID. But I already feel rough, but that could be sunstroke from yesterday. So we'll see how it goes because I can't stop shaking. So yeah. Um, so this will probably go out Wednesday. Um, something like a Tuesday or Wednesday. So yeah. Hope you've enjoyed. If you have, honestly, leave a comment. Tell me if it's something you like. Tell me if it's something you disagree with. I'm, I'm not bothered. I don't mind criticism. Um, personally, I love every item I bought. I only buy stuff I like, really, or stuff I know I can sell on for a good good profit. Um, yeah, other than that, yeah. Thank you very much for watching. Um, if you want to support my channel, please like and share the video. Um, or there are links in the description. Thank you very much. I'll see you soon. Bye for now.